Hey, Nate. Yes, Sam. Did you know that your body is home to trillions of bacteria and other tiny organisms? Is that that microbiome thing I've been hearing about in the news lately? It is, but I wonder where it comes from. Yeah, how do all those little organisms get inside of me? And is mine the same as yours? I don't know. Hey, I got got a question question about about that. that. Welcome to another episode of Hey, I Got a Question About That. I'm Sam. I'm Nate. And this is a podcast and video series where we talk about all the research going on here at the Everly College of Science at Penn State. And today on the pod, we're joined by Emily Davenport, who's an assistant professor of biology. And Emily studies the composition of our microbiomes and how it affects our health. Yeah, it was a pretty good uh, conversation. So let's check it out. So we are joined here in the studio by Emily Davenport. She's an assistant professor of biology here at Penn State. Thanks for joining us, Emily. Thanks for having me. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about your research? Yeah, I would love to. So I am really interested in the human microbiome. So that is all of the bacteria, archaea, and viruses that live in and on your body. Um, So our bodies are filled and coated with microbes. It's something like two pounds of your body weight are just the microbes that live in your gut. Um, And so as you can imagine, these microbes do a bunch of important things, um, and they can also be detrimental in the case of disease. So I'm really interested in understanding the microbiome, uh, what determines who lives in in your body, and then how that affects our health. Very cool. I I, I heard, and I don't know if this is true, but that there's actually more cells of in your microbiome than human cells in your body? Is it? It's a it's an active debate in the field right now, okay. actually. Um, so for a long time, people were saying something like 10 bacterial cells to every human cell in your body. Um, and that was done many years ago with a back of the envelope calculation. Um, and there was um, some talk in the field a few years ago where somebody did what I like to call a front of the envelope calculation. <laughs> um, and from their estimates, they think it was more to one, one to one. So for every one of your cells, there's also a bacterial cell. Either way, it's a lot of bacteria. Absolutely. Um, and you kind of define this in your in your introduction a little bit, but maybe can you tell us a little bit more exactly what is a microbiome? It seems like there's a lot of uh, talk about it in, in the media and stuff lately. So give us a definition. Absolutely. So yeah, so it is all of the basically microorganisms that live in your body. Um, so these are things like bacteria. Um, these are things like archaea. These are things like single cell eukaryotes, um, things like yeast um, that are in your body, um, and then also viruses. Um, so all of these things have a natural ecosystem in your body um, and on your skin and your mouth. Everywhere you can think of, there's microbes, basically. And um is there sort of a general thing that that these things are doing or is there is it many many different kind of functions the latter many many things and a lot of different things and many of which are essential for for us to survive. So, I mean, there are things like your bacteria help break down the food you eat. There's a bunch of things like fibrous compounds that we do not have the capacity to degrade with our own enzymes in our body. Um, Our bacteria help with that. Our bacteria help us defend against pathogens coming in. So you can imagine that there are all these bacteria in your gut that are not harming you. And if you eat something bad, as long as there are enough good ones, they can kind of fight the bad ones away. and they do a lot of other things as well. They help break down toxic compounds in, in our diets or anything else that we accidentally eat. Um, they affect the way that drugs are metabolized in our body and how they're used. So yeah, tons and tons of different things. I could go on for the entire show, but I, I will stop. <laughs> um, where, do they, where does it come from? That is a good question. Um, so... You're, you're born without any microbes, right? Um, and you come out, and so there's some seeding that happens right away. Um, so people have done studies, and they've looked at the effect of if you're naturally born or if you're born via C-section, and there's actually a difference in babies born between those two methods. So right from the get-go, you're getting microbes either from the kind of... Uh, gunk that is you're born into if you're naturally delivered or in the case of c-section babies it seems to be more similar to kind of skin microbiomes that are passed on to the babies but then you acquire it throughout life so from the things that you eat from when you're a little kid and you're putting everything in your mouth um uh yeah all of those places is where you're you're getting your microbiome from and is this one of the things that is when people talk about like breastfeeding is that one of the reasons why it's beneficial because there is a 
kind of exchange of some of the microbiome? Yeah, that's part of it. I mean, that's certainly part of the thinking. So one is that there are some bacteria that are actually transferred from the mother to the infant through breast milk. But in addition, there are compounds that are in human breast milk that only the microbes can digest. So there's things that if you gave it to a baby without any microbes in it, which is an impossibility. Um, But if you could, those compounds would pass straight through the baby. Um, It's only um, there to promote the growth of certain bacteria um, in the infant gut. So everyone's microbiome is different, but does your own microbiome differ from day to day? It does. Yeah. So there's big differences between people if we look at stool microbiomes, for example, between two people, but even one day to the next, um, depending on what you eat, depending on if you've taken antibiotics or not, depending on all all sorts of different factors, um, we see differences in the microbiome day to day even. So I think you brought up a good point there. So how does antibiotics affect your microbiome? Yeah, it can be greatly. Um, So um, as you may know, there are many different kinds of antibiotics, some that are very broad spectrum, and they can they can attack large swaths of your microbiome. And that's why some people when they take antibiotics, you get a really bad, um, you know, GI issues when you when you do that. There are other that are a little bit more narrow, for instance, they might only target gram positive bacteria or a certain subsection of bacteria in your gut. Um, But either way, antibiotics generally don't just go after whatever your infection is. It will generally wipe out a bunch of good things, too. So what about uh, adding good bacteria with probiotics? Yeah, this is something that a lot of people are really interested in, um, both in industry and academically, but we actually really don't know. For So the idea is a good one, right? Like, you, you know you need to have good bacteria in your gut, um, but it's unclear what good bacteria are. Everyone's microbiome is super, super different. And so what might be super good for you might not be super good for me. Um, It's also not clear, for instance, in a probiotic that you get in a yogurt, it's not clear how many of those bacteria actually make it through to your digestive system where they can colonize, right? A lot of them probably just die in your stomach. Um, So in theory, it's a good thing, but we actually don't, we have barely any research on probiotics and how well they work. If everybody's microbiome is different, what kind of questions are you asking and how are you, how are you studying the microbiome? Yeah, so I'm particularly interested in two things. So one, I'm really interested in what determines microbiome composition. So everyone's microbiome is different. Um, what are the different factors in our lives that determines what our microbiome looks like? So these are things like diet, host genetics, other environmental factors, medications. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing I'm really interested in is understanding if that difference we see between individuals matters for health and evolution. So the bacteria and other things that are part of our microbiome, are they also free living organisms? Do they do they do other things or are they sort of adapted to us? Yeah, so some can be free living organisms. There are some um, that we do see in nature, certainly some that form spores that are really resistant to kind of being out in the world and the elements that that entails. Um, in general though, Gut microbiomes, which is the primary microbiome I study, they look very, very different from other microbiomes. Um, So if you just showed me, um, in general, what bacteria are living in an environment and what amounts, um, I would have a pretty good guess that something is a gut compared to a soil, for example. Um, There are certain bacteria that seem to thrive in the gut, um, and then there are certain bacteria that don't seem to thrive. So our our gut is like pretty inhospitable, I would think. are these bacteria specifically evolved to live in like an acidic environment, I guess? So you would think that the gut would be super inhospitable, but in a lot of ways, it's actually a really great home, right? Like the weather is really well controlled, right? The, your internal body temperature stays relatively constant. Um, at least along the digestive tract, it's a fairly moist, food-rich environment because we're just feeding our microbes in that way. Um, so they're actually pretty happy campers there. But one thing that you mentioned is that you know, are they actually evolved to live within us? And absolutely. So one of the things that we see in host associated microbes is we actually see a reduction in their genomes um, because they become reliant on the fact that their host is providing some of these things and they don't have to. So you mentioned that there's viruses in your gut. Now, when I think of a virus, I think I'm sick. So how do these viruses work inside your stomach and your gut? 
Yeah. So certainly many times when you have a cold, you get a virus and that's what's giving you the cold. But actually, most of the viruses in your body aren't going to make you sick. They're actually targeted towards the bacteria that live in your gut. So if you were to look in a gut sample, something like 99 percent of the viruses you see there are specific for bacteria and not your own cells. So are they they're just basically because there's a nice population of the bacteria that they um prey on so the the viral part of the microbiome has been very understudied compared to the bacterial and archaeal parts so we actually don't know if there's a positive to having some of these viruses that infect bacteria in in the human host um you can theorize that there might be some benefit because they can kind of keep bacterial populations in check. So just like viruses infect us and make us sick, they do the same thing in the bacteria. So if one bacteria blooms a lot, then the viruses can say, oh, hey, look, all these people to all these bacteria to infect and they can infect those bacteria. So there's potentially some kind of microbiome regulation that's happening there. That is totally conjecture on my part because really the the virome is very understudied. And then what are archaea? So, yeah, so archaea um, are single-celled organisms. Um, they're actually more closely related to eukaryotes, which is us, than bacteria, although they are single-celled organisms, so many people kind of lump them together. Bacteria and archaea um, are called prokaryotes. Um, but, yeah, so they're similar to, to bacteria. They, they are, li can live in your gut. They live in other ecosystems as well. Um, they have a slightly different genetic structure from bacteria and different, again, from, from eukaryotes. What sort of methods are you using to study the microbiome? Yeah, so I'm using um, two different methods. Um, I use 16S RNA gene sequencing. Um, Basically, what that method is, is we look at a piece of the DNA in each bacterial cell that acts as kind of like a barcode reading out what species that DNA was part of. Um, and so we use next-gen sequencing methods where we can get millions of um, kind of reads per sample. And because we have so many, we can get a good estimate of how many of each different kind of bacteria are there. So that's one method. Um, the other method that I use is something called metagenomic sequencing. So basically what that means is we look at all of the microbes, host DNA, viruses, all of the genetic material in a sample, and we sequence that. And so the benefits of doing that is you can see entire genomes of different organisms. Um, but in certain systems, it, it can be a little tricky, especially in humans, because, for instance, let's say you take a nasal swab, you're mostly going to get human DNA and not bacterial. So we use both methods depending on the question we're asking um, and the system we're taking the microbiome from. So are you interested in mostly sort of cataloging all the different species that are there, or is are the sort of relative amount of different species important as well? Yeah, we think it is. So it, it depends on the question. but. For some types of studies that I work on, we're really interested in understanding what different bacteria are there. In most studies, it's really looking at differences in abundances between individuals. So if you have more of bacteria A than I do, what does that mean? Does that mean you're more prone to getting some disease? Um, does that mean you were more likely to have eaten some dietary component than I was? Something like that. We all have differences in our microbiome, but are there things that are universal that are shared by everyone? Potentially. So people have tried looking at what species are in the microbiome and looking to see if there's a core set of species between individuals in the gut. And that does not seem to exist. It doesn't seem like there is a single species that is always found between people. So this is very, very different if you think about it, then something like our own genomes, where we have basically the same genes, there's just little tiny differences between all of us, right? Our microbiomes can vary, at least in terms of species content, quite a bit. Um, what people are trying to look at um, and where there may be more similarity is with gene content in microbes. So it could be that there's not a particular species of microbe that we all share, but there might be uh, you know, we need to have a microbe that is able to digest this type of fiber or a microbe that is able to generate this type of amino acid that we can't or something like that. Um, so work is underway there. So how are the differences related to human health? Yeah, it's a good question. So there's a lot of work trying to connect the microbiome with human health. And if you've read like any newspaper in the last five years, you've probably seen how your microbiome is giving you 
X disease or Y disease or Z disease. So a lot of work has gone into right now looking at associations between the microbiome and disease. And what I mean there is that we see differences in the microbiome between someone who is sick and someone who is healthy. Um, and we see this across a large number of diseases. Um, what we don't know at this point is whether or not we see differences in the microbiome that is driving disease, or if you are sick, that is resulting in differences in your microbiome. Um, so that is an open area of research. So are there like regional differences in the microbiome? Someone from Africa has a different microbiome than someone from Europe? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, there have been, most microbiome studies have been done in either North American or European populations, as one might expect. However, people have looked at microbiomes in people from Africa, South America, Asia, all over the place, including groups that do not use technology, remote tribes in South Africa uh, and, and South America. Um, and what we see is that there's huge differences in the microbiomes between people um, in westernized countries and non-westernized countries. So what we see is that there's fewer species that live in the guts of Western individuals as compared to um, non-Western individuals. And so there's a lot of hypotheses about why many are related to diet. So um, people in Western cultures, we tend to eat more processed foods, um, more meats, um, more sugars, things like that. Whereas people um, in non-Western societies typically eat a lot more vegetables, root vegetables, things with a lot of fiber in it. Um, there's also different access to medical care. Um, so that could affect the microbiome if you're not taking as many antibiotics or, or doing that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so huge regional differences between people. Beyond regional differences or things like that, what sort of things are um, driving these differences between individuals? A lot of different things, yeah. So um, I'm particularly interested in the gut. And in the gut, as you can imagine, diet explains a huge proportion of differences between individuals. Um, so basically anything you eat, your bacteria eat too. Um, in addition, a lot of other things play a role. So if you're on medication, um, that can affect microbial composition in the gut. Um, one of the big areas um, that I've been researching for a long time um, is the role of host genetics. So does your genome actually result in different bacteria that live in your gut? Um, and the answer there is that, to a small extent, yes. Um, there's a certain subset of bacteria that seem to be heritable in the gut, um, and we're able to identify some variants in the host genome that are associated with bacteria as well. What about um, changes over a lifetime? There are a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when you're born, you don't really have a microbiome, and you quickly get things from your environment when you're born, whether that's natural birth or C-section. Um, and then over the first three years, you have a very different microbiome than you have later in life. So as you can imagine, if you're drinking either your mother's milk or formula, that's gonna be a very different food source for the microbes that are in you. Um, so you have a very different microbial content. Um, at around age three, microbiomes tend to shift quite a bit and they look more adult-like. Um, but then even over the course of your lifespan, things change quite a bit. Um, so there are particular bacteria, for instance, for example, bifidobacteria that we know decrease over the lifespan of an individual. So the younger you are, the more you have, and then as you get older, the less you have. And why that is, is not clear. Is it that your body is doing different things as you age, and therefore it's promoting different bacterial growth patterns? Or is it something, is this just part of like the aging process and inevitable because you're slowly getting farther and farther away from that initial inoculum, inoculum you had as a, as a kid. Um, but it's an interesting question about how, how things change over time. Is there any sort of chicken and egg situation? Like, do you get the microbiome because it comes with the food or because you need it to digest the food? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It's a little bit of both. Um, so obviously when we look, you know, pick a carrot out of the ground and we eat it, washing it in between, hopefully. But even when you wash it, there's still gonna be some microbes that are on that piece of food. You eat it, and some of those microbes do pass through and colonize your gut. Um, as an adult, it's probably not very many. Most of those things are dying in your stomach, but some do pass through, and if they're able to colonize, they can, you know, they can reside in you. So you're getting microbes directly from your food. But in addition, the microbes that you already have living in your gut will use the food that you eat um, to grow differentially. So, um, so the answer is both, yeah. The microbiome has been in the news a lot more recently. Um, 
And is is that mostly because we're just sort of learning about it? And is there any anything we need to be concerned about as far as our microbiome goes? No. Um, it, so we've known for a long time that we've been coated in microbes. And there have been microbiologists for ages, you know, since people have developed microscopes looking at all the microbes. Um, in and on our bodies and in nature. Um, it's really exploded in the news because of technological advances in the last 15 years or so. So about 15 years ago, um, there was uh, an advance in sequencing technology where instead of just sequencing one little thing at a time, we could sequence millions and millions of things at a time. And as you can imagine, in your gut, where I, where I just told you there's trillions and trillions of cells, being able to look at those millions and millions of times is much more powerful than looking at them one by one. Um, so we've been able to really expand the scope of what we've been able to do with the advent of next-gen sequencing. And that's why there, these studies are now popping up all over the place. So with this new technology and with this new interest because of it, um, where do you think this is, this is going? What's sort of the, the next step in our understanding of our microbiome? Yeah, we're just at the beginning stages of microbiome research. Um, so most of the studies you see in the newspaper are associations only. So this problem of um, does the microbiome lead to disease or does disease affect the microbiome? Um, teasing out that direction is super important. So there's a lot of hope that we can use the microbiome as a therapy, right? If we change our microbiome, either with a drug or with changes in your diet, that that will improve your disease state. Um, but we don't know that that's the case. If the disease is leading to changes in the microbiome. You can try to change your microbiome all you want. It's not going to make your, your symptoms any better. Um, so the biggest question in the field, um, in my view, is looking at this causality between the microbiome and disease. So that was cool. Yeah, I never realized that there are so many living organisms inside of my gut. And there's viruses in there and bacteria that actually do something. Right. And it's kind of amazing that even though we've known about this, all these you know, microbes living on us for a long time. It's only with the advent of new technologies that we're really starting to learn what they do and how much variation there is. Yeah, and some of them are even beneficial. So fans of the pod watching on YouTube will have noticed that we've made some major upgrades to the studio. Yes, and another major news. We're coming up on our 12th episode, our one-year anniversary. Right, and for that anniversary, we're planning a very special episode in which we answer your questions. Yeah, so if you have any science-based questions that you want answered, please send them to higaquat at psu.edu. That's H-I-G-A-Q-A-T at psu.edu. Yeah, um, and we will go out and find some scientists who have the answers to those questions. So, I think we have enough of them here. I think so. Yeah. So if you want to find out more about Emily's research or any of the research going on here at the Penn State Everly College of Science, we'll have links in the show notes below. Yeah, thanks for joining us again. Um, if you haven't already, you can go back and listen to our previous episodes or watch them on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you can find us wherever you find your podcasts. So please check them out, and be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Am I talking slow enough? I know I can be like, blah, 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 and have a lot of coffee today. No. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. That's why we're doing this show. I'm fine. What? What's, the <laughs> What's going on with us today? <clears throat> I just kept on giving reactions. Uh, I can start again, but I don't know what we're doing different. Okay, I got it. You got it? I got it. Oh. Okay, well, okay. You just go with me. Hey, Nate. Yeah, Sam. Did you know that your body is home to trillions of bacteria and other microbes? I drink hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, that. I'm an expert on that. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? I don't think it has anything to do with that. Have you heard about people? I should never say the word about. About. Talk a little Can't about. Talk a lot about. Hey, Nate. Oh, you're going? I'm going. That's what she said. <laughs>